Hi, I'm Cheok Park, an assistant professor at KDI School, also one of the core faculty members in data science program. The diverse background and real-world expertise of our students is one of the best assets our KDI School has. In that perspective, this event can provide students a great opportunity to apply the state-of-art computational techniques like machine learning to real-world social economic issues. So I hope in the end it can attract more people, students, inside, both inside and outside of school to our data science program. I'm currently doing research on the fault risk analysis for the retail credit market. In Mexico, and this is true for most developing countries, there seems to be no correlation between the fall risk and the interest incurs on the loans. For this reason, I've created a model which through machine learning methods tries to analyze the default risk for, of a person with questions that do not include uh, credit history, for example, so, to, so as to include people without previous credit. Actually, I'm now studying how to combine machine learning methods to public policy and economic fields. So I could get an opportunity to being a TA. So through the TA session, I try to help students to make the progress and solve the problem together. Uh, in this opportunity in the class for machine learning for social science, I wanted to analyze uh, how sentiment analysis uh, can be done by machine learning. And for that, I use four different classification models. And the results, I find out that random forest is the one that actually high, high accuracy. And I'm really satisfied about the, at that. Um, everyone wants economic freedom these days, so do I. And that's the reason why I just want to put this topic as a forecast of the project and the recommendation. And I just put the things in the LSTM because it's about the time series, which stock market and which product that we need to invest in. Uh, my presentation is very simple in nature. I want to try and classify Hancha-based Korean names. Uh, sorry, I want to try and classify the gender using Hancha-based Korean names. Yes. Uh, so this is my product. It's gender prediction using Hancha-based Korean names. Uh, the introduction. Um, you're a Korean, so you already know. A lot of the names in Korean are based on Hancha. So for example, Dohi, which is one of her friends and classmate, uh, her Hancha is based on this, which means law and shining. And that's what forms Dohi. Uh, this name can be spelled, I think, with 400 different meanings uh, based on the kancha that forms to and he as well. But no matter what it is, it's pronounced the same to he. So there is a pattern. And my question is, can this pattern be used to predict gender? And the answer is yes. And the way I did it, I had to get all the data. So I got about 5.4 million names along with the gender. And then I filtered out long names because they're clearly not Korean. Uh, and then I processed it so that it's split apart. So Kanu would be Kon and then U separately. Uh, Mikel would be Mi and Kel separately. After that, I did a Hancha check. So what that is, is that I looked through each of these characters and I checked if there was a Hancha equivalent. Kel doesn't have Hancha, so I took it out. And then once I have the final name left over, uh, this is how I broke it out. And then after I organized it, that's when I used uh, machine learning applications and algorithms. I stuck with the decision trees because classification, uh, classifying either it's a guy or a girl. I start off with a decision tree. Um, it's a basic tree. It is very easy to interpret it, uh, but unfortunately it has a problem of overfitting data and it's hard to generalize and it does not handle three name characters well. So I did random forest next, which helps uh, resolve some of the issues here, which has that me oh, sorry, which means it has better results, but I fortunately I found out there was still heavy bias on more represented data. What I mean by more represented data is that out of these 5.4 million Korean names, about 20% of them have the same 60 names. The same 60 names represent 1.1 million Koreans. Everything just kind of means something. True negative and true positive means that we are getting the results that we expect. If we know that Toei is a female and we put it into the algorithm, if it's correct, then it'll be in the green area. If it predicts incorrectly, so we know that it's a female, but it comes out as male, then it falls in the white spot. Putting these two together, it's 90% accuracy. Uh, this class gave me a great opportunity to try uh, to learn more about machine learning and to have a natural application. Um, I like to think that my project of classifying gender based on Hunter names, uh, Hunter based Korean names, as a success. We've learned a lot from uh, coding itself to do processes 
to the best practices in machine learning methods, but of course the core of the course was uh, machine learning itself. I would uh, wholeheartedly recommend this uh, class for every student. It really is not a simple uh, process, but it definitely is not impossible and everybody can do it, I believe. Yes, I definitely think that every student in social science needs to understand data and, machine, and through the class of machine learning they can actually challenge themselves, not only stay maybe in the basic level, but they can challenge themselves to learn more and understand the concept better. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I fully uh, recommend this class because we can get and learn a lot of things as much as we can. Um, even though it's quite harsh, but it's really effective into our whole life. Yeah. I could learn more from the students because they had a really a bunch of fresh ideas and I saw that their passion to never give up. If some of you need someone to someone are good at data analysis, public policy or economy, please find our students. Thank you.